Hello guys, welcome back. Um, today we are going to be looking at the Taylor series method for solving ODEs. So this this last part of our course, we are be looking at how we can solve ODEs, numerical methods for solving ODEs. And one of those, if not most of them, will be constructed from from the basic Taylor series or series expansion. So first, first of all, we've got the Euler method. So this is a first order Taylor series method. That's the Euler method. So it only has constant term and the linear term and the error is truncated Taylor series of order two, and uh, given given an ODE, the first order differential equation, uh, y prime of x, which is equals to f of x. So first of all, you should make y prime of x the subject of a formula. So then that means the other side will be your f of x. So these are your initial conditions. So at x zero, x zero, your y is given by y zero, and then you want to determine your next y value. So you use y, uh, you use y x zero, y evaluated at x zero plus i h for i1 up to and so on so this is the formula for for the Euler method that you need to know you need to know that you need y0 your initial conditions so if you have got your initial conditions y0 this is equals to y evaluated at x0 and then your next value will be evaluated by x i1 so i plus 1 so this would be when i is 0 when i is 0 you get your y1 which is given by this one is y0 plus h f of x remember f of x is coming from your from your right hand side of your ode is when you have met dy dx the subject of the formula all right, so the interpretation of the Euler method, you want to, to you, you are at this point x0, and then you want to approximate the next point. So what will happen at x1? So your x1 will give you, x1 will give you the value for y1, and at x2, you should get the value for y2. But in doing that, we use like slopes or gradients or lines to create something similar to what we saw in lecture 14 to create trapezia. So the first one is your h is the difference between x1 and x0 and then this is your slope which is f of x0, x0, y0 and then your height will be given by h f of x0, y0 zero and the second slope check not the, dis, the difference there the second slope is x1 or i1 because this is x1 your initial your lower point is x1 and y1 so we are using this one to approximate y2 for y1 you use y0 x0 then and so on your h is constant in this case and then in our second case y1 is given by y y 0 plus h times the slope and then for y2 our slope is this one so it will be y2 plus y1 h times the slope as you can see this looks like the 
more like the equation of a, of a line. So from here we can then formulate or derive the Euler formula. Okay, so let's have a hands-on example. So we want to use the Euler equation to solve this ODE. First of all, you make your dy dx the subject of formula, which is equals to 1 plus x squared. Your initial conditions are y, y1, which is equals to minus 4. And then to determine y, you want to determine y, the value of y at 1.01, 1 1.02, 1 1.03. As you can see, there is a difference of 0. Point. You should see something from these values. That there is a difference of 0. 0.01. So your 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 edge. All right. So since the right hand side of the ODE, this one, the right hand side was 1 plus h. So your f of xy is 1 plus x squared and then your x naught your x naught is this value which is 1 your y naught is minus 4 and your h is 0 0.01 because you can see the difference between this one and this one 1 1.02 minus 1 1.01 1 1.03 minus 1 1.02 you get 0.01. So your Euler formula is given by y i plus 1 is equals to y i plus h f of x i y i. Right, so your first step, this one you want to compute. Next step, give you y1. So your y1 will be y0 plus h f of x0 y0. Y, y0 is minus 4. h is 0 0.01. X, x0 is 1. And then y0 is y0 is minus 4. Y is zero. Y uh, okay. So remember, uh, so this is a H is zero is minus four, and then you have got H, which is zero point zero one. And then you have got f of x not y not. This is a function. This is supposed to be a function of x and y. But our function here is only in terms of x. So you then substitute uh, this guy by 1, which is this one. And then x not x not is 1. So we substitute by that. So this is 1 squared. Then this will give you minus 3.98. Second one, so for y2, this will be equals to y1. So for y2, it means our i will be 1, 1 plus 1, y2, y1, a h, x1, y1. y1 is given by this guy minus 3.98 plus h is still 0 0.1. And then this function which is your function, this one, given by 1, plus your x, y, 1. So your x, your x, 1, your x, 1 is now, your x, 1 is now 1.01. 1 .01. So x, 1 is 1.01, 1 .01, which is equals to minus 3.0. 9598 and so on. Next step is and to evaluate y3, which is equals to y2 for because i will be equals to 2 the y2 plus hx2 y2, which is equals to y2 
this one minus 3958 there plus your h 0 0.1 0 0.01 and then your f of x2 y2 which is given by 1 plus 102 where x is 102 so this squared which is equals to 0 minus 3.9394 so therefore, you can summarize your information to this table. So, so you satisfy yourself that if you compute for one point, the next step four, you should get this one. So for zero, one, two, three, is there four? There are four this one. So if for zero, it's minus four, then for one. It i is equals to 1, you have your xi, which is 1.01, .01, and then your y is minus 3.98, and then your it i equals to 2, then you have got 1.02, and your y is minus 3.9595, and then lastly at 1.03, you have got minus 3.9394. Uh, 3.94. All right, so you can then choose to like compare the estimated values together with your exact your true value. So this table does that. Your i, so these are your y, y values, these ones, and then your true values are minus 4, minus 3.9798, minus 9.5959, minus 9.3909. You can as well solve that and graph it using MATLAB. So, or you can use softwares to to to, uh, to develop a scheme for solving these numerical methods. So you can solve them using numerical methods. So remember the projects that I gave you to do. Uh, it's your assignment. I hope I. I think some of the groups were doing this, so you can check out some YouTube videos on how to solve, uh, apply the numeric, the Euler method in solving what is using mathematical softwares. All right, so that was the first, the first order Euler method, or the Euler method, and then we have got the second order Taylor series method so the second order Taylor series you are truncating at the second derivative so for the first first if Euler method you are, we are truncating at the first derivative so this one is second order means we are stopping at the second derivative so so what you need is you need to make the second derivative your subject of the formula and then the third order Taylor series will be given by the gy dx and then equals to f of x remember that and then for the third Taylor series we are now truncating at the derivative so you need to make dy cubed dx cubed your subject the formula and then these other ones will be derived from them or you will build from them then the nth order Taylor series means that we are stopping at the nth derivative and we need to derive second derivative up to the nth derivative so those are how we compute higher order derivatives. We're going to look at that 
now how we apply the second order Taylor series method. So for the second order Taylor series method, those are given that do dx dt plus dx squared plus t is equals to 1 and you want to use h 0, 0, 1 and x 0 is equals to 1. Take note that your variable now is y, x, not y. On our previous example, your dependent variable was y. But for this one, your dependent variable is x. So you have got x and it's varying with respect to t. So your initial points, you need to know that t, when t is 0, t is 0 x is 1 so that's how you read this initial point and then another question that you need to ask yourself since this is the second order derivative you second order taylor series you need to ask yourself what is second derivative of xt so the second derivative of xt is obtained by a first by differentiating dx dt again so firstly we make dx dt the subject of the formula so we take everything from everything that is not dx dt from the left hand side to the right hand side to obtain 1 minus 2x squared minus t then if we differentiate this we get the second derivative this one give you 0 this one give you minus 4x and then minus 4x dx dt and then this one will give you minus 1 why are we having minus 4x dx dt because this is implicit differentiation. Whenever you differentiate with, with respect to uh, the, the dependent variable, we multiply by the derivative dx dt. Remember, we differentiated with respect to our dependent variable x, so multiply by dx dt. So, but you know what dx dt is. You know that dx dt is 1 minus 2x squared minus t. So you substitute for this one there. So minus x, 1 minus 2x squared minus t minus 1. If, if you have forgotten how you apply implicit differentiation, please revise this concept on how you differentiate implicit functions or implicit differentiation. So, so therefore, our second derivative is given by minus 4x, 1 minus 2x squared minus t minus 1. So our f of x t, so our f of t x is given by 1 minus 2x squared minus t. Which is if t is equals to 0, this is 0 and x is 1 and h is 0 0.01. So applying our formula, applying our formula, mm -hmm. Applying our formula, remember, formula is y plus i plus 1 is equals to yi plus first h times first derivative plus h squared 2 factorial which is second derivative. So in this case, our dependent variable is x. So this is xi plus 1 plus xi plus h 
this is the first derivative plus h squared over 2 this is your second derivative so when i is equals to 0 you have got 1 x i is x0 which is 1 and then your h and then 1 minus 2 i 0 which is 1 squared minus 0 because t i at 0 is 0 plus h 0 0.01 squared over 2 second derivative where there is x 0 the i 0 then this one is 0 so this is 1 1 and then this one is 0 substitute and satisfy so that you get the 0 0.9901 Second step for x is x2. You have got x1 here. So your x1 you for it computed from your previous step. So you substitute there plus h 0 0.1 0 0.01 1 minus 2 x1 x1 you have computed there. So x1 squared minus t i so now our t instead of being zero we add h remember these are step size h is also known as the step size so we are increasing that we are increasing the steps so h is also known as the step size let me explain that so this is our initial starting point which was zero so this is t0 then 8h this is our next point so if we add h we are adding h so maybe this is the step size so so if we add h there so this t will be 0 0.01 plus h squared which is 0 0.01 over 2 and then 1 minus 1 minus 4 h x1 we've already computed that 1 minus 2 x1 we've already computed that squared minus t1 t1 is 0 plus h which is 0 0.01 and then we obtain this value so at the comfort of your homes, please uh, show that x3 is equal to 0 0.9716. So that's how we apply the second order Taylor series method. Thank you.